Hi, and welcome to Inspiring Salon Professionals, the podcast that's going to help you develop your careers, develop yourself personally, and um, help you on your way in your job role within the salon industry. So this week is episode nine, and we are looking again at career pathways. And this week we're looking at um, apprenticeships. And I have picked a really lovely lady to come and join me this week called Sarah Abel, who comes from TNB Skills. And she provides training and um, apprenticeship skills for mainly she's in the Kent area but she also works nationally too and is developing and scaling her business so anywhere in the country if you have an apprenticeship requirements you can give her a shout but this week so we're talking all around um, apprenticeships and we also learned some new stuff about traineeships too which I didn't really know and uh, and she's a very chatty, a very, very warm, lovely lady. And so even though I had a great big list of questions, I didn't get to ask many, but she has covered, I think, everything that you would ever need to know and want to know about apprenticeships and about the funding. So it kind of covers everything for persons looking for um, being an apprentice, but also for the salon owners and how they can use the scheme and the traineeship scheme to help them develop their team so I'll hand over now and um, we'll start the interview and I'll see you on the other side on that computer so you've got to hit your button yeah okay oh something passed hang on I need to turn my phone off oh yeah it's a point let me turn mine off too you turn yours I know it is and I've just got some and and I know what's going to happen because I was talking to someone earlier and she's now I've got about four messages just (laughs) right <clears throat> right okay yeah so so hi sarah and welcome to inspiring salon professionals and we're going to be talking about apprenticeships today but if you can just first of all just explain who you are and where you work and all that kind of stuff and what it is that you do okay so i'm sarah um abel um i'm down in kent um, but we do cover we're national basically now um so i run a training academy um for hair nails beauty and anything to do with our sector basically team leading and we also do customer service which is for front of house basically so but it's all it's all geared around our industry been doing it since 2008 we've got just over 100 apprentices on programs with us at the moment um yeah and we also deliver other um training funded training such as the traineeship program and adult education budget program and uh, we also own a salon (laughs) as well so you're a bit busy (laughs) busy yeah well actually (laughs) i i I would like to say i've got some really good people that work for us do you know what i mean they're much more cleverer than me i always think that that that's the thing you need to uh, let people have ownership of their jobs um, yeah. and they will come up with the answers for you so they're cleverer than me that's what I always say <laughs> See, but I do think it's like one of the things like just doing the podcast is like currently I'm doing the marketing not very well at the moment I'm doing the marketing I'm doing all the editing yeah <laughs> everything. Everything. Well, I, I'm, co- I'm cool at marketing that's I, that, I love that but yeah. anything else is like if you have to put anything together, I'm really lucky. I have a business partner, um, Julie, and she's she's the innovator. She's the um, she's the putter together, if you yeah. know what I mean. So like she, I'll go to I want to do this, and then she'll go, whoa, hold on a minute, let's slow, 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 slow down, Sarah. How are we going to do this? So I think it's always good to have that personal person in your business if you can have that yeah. person to be the person that helps you with the putting together part. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. I know this is it. I know I have to say over the last year, I've surrounded myself with like some really amazing business buddies that are the kind of there and I could just go, I can't do this now. Yeah. Help. Collaboration, collaboration. That's it, the other thing I think is, is, is the key of building yeah. any business, whether it's yours. Um, you know, I'm always surprised. I've always looked at salons as not being competition. I've always looked at them as inspiring. So I, yeah. I think if I find a salon that I think is really good and what they're doing is really well, then I want to know how they do it. Does, yeah. does that make sense that I can improve my business? And I think that's a really important thing. I think if you're, if you look at other salons as being competition you probably won't grow to be honest because you're you're concentrating on what they're doing rather than what you're doing but if you can take what they do and improve that within your own business then that's positive so is isn't it and and also you know just sort of say the whole thing I think and what you have to recognize is that those collaborations I mean I've always collaborated not necessarily with like the salon that's like that close to me yeah but 
um, I've always been friendly with those salons and I've never set out to try and create that comp that competitiveness. But I've got loads of salons that are within, you know, like a 10 mile radius of me that I'm quite good mates with. Yeah, and, um, well, actually, my, my business partner just showed you how it works. She came to, she, we got to know each other because the first few apprentices that I ever had, she had some of the, some of the apprentices in her salon. Yeah. And then we, then she came to do her teaching qualification with me. And she also did a, um, some co other courses with me, got to know her, thought, actually, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> come and work for me and I and she went I actually said to her and she'll 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 laugh at this and she might just laugh because she's next to me but basically she said to me um Sarah I only want to work part-time I don't want to yeah. be in your business she's full-time now but she's a business yeah. partner so she's got she's got an uh, interest in the business now yeah, but I she, think as well if but if you enjoy if you enjoy what you do it's like half it's half the task isn't yeah, it totally but she sold yeah. her salon and came uh, and now yeah. she's got the training center we, we being fair we just opened another salon in in um three two weeks before covid so we've just done we've had five between us a spot bought and sold yeah. them so we sort of know what we're doing Does i was that gonna mean? say hopefully you know what you're doing yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully yeah. sometimes i think <laughs> fingers oh, crossed I'm, yeah and, I, and i'm being really honest you know i don't know all the answers but i i think the collaboration bit you get to know other people yeah. and the, like I said, it doesn't. They don't have to physically work for you. They can give you ideas, and if you yeah. can bounce off people, and I do believe if you give out, you get back. Definitely, Absolutely. it definitely worked for me. No question of a doubt. Do you know what I, mean? I, know, I mean, I as a like for when I when I bought it, even now, I don't need to be a salon owner to still go to my salon owner friends. <laughs> but yeah. you know, but we do. You know, we just and we just sit and talk shop all night because no yeah. one else understands what you're going through other than Absolutely. other salon owners or other business owners, even. But, it, you know, no one gets it. And so, you know, have and even whatever level, I think whatever level you are, you're at in this industry, no one really quite gets it. So if you are an apprentice or you're a stylist or you're a beauty therapist or an aesthetic technician, whatever it is, you need to have that group of collaboration around you. Yeah. And, you know, and not necessarily for entrepreneurial business purposes, but just for that kind of offload debrief just so you get that mutual understanding and it just gives you an example of how that's really worked over covid so like i started a group um from just my salon owners back just when two weeks before covid went in so that i could keep in touch with them because yeah. because we were in education we had a really good in indication that basically we were going to be closed it was that they, they were just you know like some of the things they closed um the colleges yeah. um, and there was like you need to have a, a some kind of plan in place and then I know the salons went dead completely dead so I thought what well, I think that we're gonna have but I only thought it's gonna be eight weeks I have to say yeah. <laughs> it would be as long so I created um, a Facebook group which I'd never had before and I think we had 40 salons in that group and that grew in probably two months to 730. And it was basically where Julie and I were giving advice about the bounce back loans, about the yeah. um, all the stuff that you need to know, you know, like, because we, we'd already had a contingency plan because of our training centre. So it was really easy to then put that over into our salons and where yeah. to get everything. And we did quite a lot of lives on where to get the grants because people, salon owners felt so alone. And from that now has come a lot of other salon owners that now have started having apprentices from us. Yeah. And from that, we have like a we have a monthly meeting like, like this, basically on Zoom, where we all get together and we all chat about yeah. what's working and what isn't working when it's really good because yeah. it gives you that bit of a mastermind because some people know things better than I do you know and I sit there and go, oh, I've never thought of that such a good idea yeah. because you've only got one head haven't you but to be able to have somebody tell you about what's worked for them and then see if that's going to be a right not everything's going to be a right fit for your salon but it no. does really help and and also building relationships with other salons in my area that was really good because they then met other salon owners from their area so it's built a bit of a you know I don't know a bit of a um a group that you can networking group that you can get together and have a good old well this, this doesn't work or that doesn't work yeah. and especially with employing people because I think we find it very difficult as salon owners to know how because majority of that of salon owners and we were talking about this before is 
they come from a hair or beauty or a nail background and haven't ever run a business before. Yep. So running a business is a is a job in itself. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Completely. And I don't. I think a lot of people don't understand it. And this why it's kind of like why well, I'm trying to with like this because at the moment I'm in the middle of doing this like career pathways little mini yep. series, and it's so important because I think people need to understand the roles that you need to be able to take on when you are a salon owner or so you know, whatever, whatever level of, of um no, of role good. you have within the industry you know and the higher you get the more diverse the roles become and the more responsibility but even, and, um, but even for julie and i we were like chatting i mean we're scaling our business quite at the moment okay because obviously we want to be more national and have you know like a greater a reach for what we're doing because I, I believe in the apprenticeship program 100% and the reason I believe in it is because I've used it to build every single one of my salons and it's always worked um, and I think one of the things that we think is probably missing is that last bit you know when you get you've done your apprenticeships and you leave and then you go on to more of the advanced treatments which again we we offer but then from there there needs to be like a little thing where so what now I want to be a salon owner, what do I need to do to be a salon owner? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that is what's, and I think COVID showed me how many salons are out there that A, don't have any self-worth and they, I mean, you know, they offer such a good service. I mean, like if you talk about going to a dentist, you'll go to a dentist and privately and you will spend, I don't know, two, 300 pounds for like yeah. half an hour's work. Yeah. They come and have a set of nails from us and it's £30. You know, and we're using the same products a lot of the time. Totally. I mean, you know, they're only using it a lot of the time. They're using like a UV gel product. And, right, uh, but obviously, they, you know, they do train for a little bit longer than we do. But but we still need to have that self-worth oh, and that value, mean, in our, value in our professionalism. And that's a new... I mean, anyone that's done a proper nail course mm. and it has gone right the way through their MVQs and they're... Yep. Or they're like now... Yeah. Or now the standards, because they've changed changed and I can tell you about that in a second you have they've probably done a good two or three years of being in a salon then they've built a clientele up because not many people do like apprenticeship then go on and open the salon because it's it, it's too you know you're in a salon for a while to to build that that stage up and the only reason normally when people leave is because they've reached a ceiling and they want to earn more money do you know what I mean so for me it's a bit like I keep thinking to myself those poor um I just think that there's a missing gap there does that make oh, sense definitely. and there's lots of mentors out there that are now beginning to fill those gaps but I just think that could be something that long term is, people... and that, that's part of like what my you know with what I'm doing with like with the podcast and with the online training stuff that I'm just in the process of building is to kind of feel that you know because there's there's a lot of co coaching and mentoring out there for once you've got your salon yeah and there's a lot of there's a lot of training for in salon therapists and stylists and stuff but there is this thing that doesn't really help you bridge the gap and yeah. when you want to start your salon you know there's there's so much that is there's so much information and you're only really so much of that information you only ever really use once yeah um and so there isn't a lot of um training out there for it but no. it is part of what i'm doing at the moment with um with all of my stuff one day i'm going to make it all thank be out God. That, thank, well maybe we should talk because we should that, that is definitely <laughs> something that's definitely something that i'm interested in because yeah. i agree with you i think there's a missing gap from the from the where they when people have finished their apprenticeships and they go into a salon at the moment the route is self-employment mm. which to be really honest is probably a bit of disguised employment and now hmrc mm. are really cracking down on that yeah. that's becoming a problem for salon owners and the reason that they cannot um afford to take those people on an, on a higher wage is because their prices are too cheap yeah. and that is key and that's where they need to recognize that and I, I you know I, I and the thing is I was even talking to our business mentor today and he was saying we were just chatting about his wife his wife they're in Hemel Hempstead his wife travels an hour and a half to have her hair done okay yeah. pays stupid money for it he says <laughs> yeah he doesn't know about how much it is so he yeah. said then it, you know it's stupid money <laughs> okay but <laughs> People will travel, and like we were saying earlier on, if you were to have sort of like a like a structure like you have in hair, so you have like um, a grad, uh, an apprentice, a graduate, a 
you know, that, that type of structure, you can raise your prices accordingly, attract the people you want. Stop looking at the salon down the road who is having their prices out at whatever price it is do you know what I mean yeah. and think to yourself well actually my prices if if I had a structure in place where I raise the prices depending on experience you can grow your team totally and that's where I love the apprenticeship scheme yeah uh, because this is exactly back. what you can do so let's roll right into this <laughs> <laughs> so we're a nightmare because we both just we like talking we both like talking don't we yeah, yeah. right anyway so should I ask you some questions you certainly can, I'll can I? <laughs> right okay so are we going to cover first of all I want to look at um a print about how people can become an apprentice okay. and what it is that um they're going to get from it and how they get involved really because okay. at the moment from my understanding of like the last time I was taking apprenticeships um it was, I think at that point, it was 16 to 24. I think that might have changed now. So yeah. firstly, um, how, what, what is it? So what are, what are the criteria? How old do they be, need Doesn't to be? Doesn't matter. They can be at any I know. age. They can be any age yeah, now, can't they? Age. And in fact, you can even have someone already working in your salon who may be trained as a hairdresser that wants to do a nail apprenticeship. Yeah. Or if you've got somebody who's doing beauty who wants to do a hair, as long as it's completely different yeah. to what they've, you know, because they're all they they're all careers yeah. in their own right. Does that make sense? So because I know well, I know, and this may be going back a really long time, that if you had a level two or a level three say then you couldn't do another level two or level three say but that's all yeah, that's so now all you can do as many as you want yeah yeah with and, the standards and, the standards are different as long as there's no crossover yeah um, so you have to look at it so like the beauty professional if you look at so the apprenticeships changed they changed about i think about two or three years ago there was a thing called the wolf report that came out where employers were complaining across the board not just in hair and beauty but across the board that apprenticeships were not to a good standard so this government or the conservative government basically wanted to raise the standard of the apprenticeship because ultimately we want people to look at it as a it's, it's an equivalent of going to university. That's what they wanted to do, which they have started to do. And there is now management, at level five management apprenticeships. Yes. More or less, if you were to look on the Institute of Apprenticeships, that's where you'll find all the information of the different apprenticeships there are. There's so many that, that are out there and they're still being written and they're still coming out with new standards. So basically what happened was, is they put a load of employers together Julie and I were quite lucky because we had our salon so that salon we were like on the beauty one so we, we didn't participate like lots because it was voluntary but we went to two or three of the meetings and I think we did help do the nail one as yeah. in the nail um, professional we did as being because you've got the beauty professional but you've got roots now so you can go through the nail route if that's what you want to do yeah. which I think is great because that's basically a different um, different qualification for somebody going through the level two beauty yep. and then you've also got uh, like a uh, you know like if you're in um, a big a store and you're selling perfume or makeup yep. there's also that route so there's those three routes and then obviously yes, some more like the retail um beauty yes totally and then you've got a hair route okay which is basically the barbering you can go down that route or you can go down the women's hairdressing route so basically that's they're very specific um, things, but what's changed is where the old apprenticeships were MVQs. So the it would be the college who taught that person, and they yeah. would be the person signing them off. And I don't think that's the college's fault because the way that the funding is structured, it is very much you don't get paid the last bit of money, okay, until they complete. So there's a lot of so if you imagine colleges big colleges or just other training providers that, that they had to get those people through to be able to be paid basically so so there was a lot of um what i call apprentices that probably were signed off okay who shouldn't have been so that lowered the standard of what you got well now the new apprenticeship standards you have to have what's called endpoint assessment so yeah. Uh, in our sector, we've got um, City and Guilds, we've got BTCT. I think there's a new company just come out called Qualify, I'm who are another. Work, yeah, working. Yeah, so that so they so all of them are now becoming endpoint assessors. So what happens is is the training provider. So we're the training provider. We train, okay. 
we do our training a little bit different. We, we do it as being, we have the salon um, owner involved in all our training because I believe as a salon owner myself, if they're not involved in the training, then it's too slow. So, cause they're not bringing a revenue quick enough. Um, or it, the quality is not as good because basically you can only go as fast as the person in that college to see what I mean. So if you've got yeah. a group of 30 kids, you can only go as fast as the the, the weakest link as such. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or the yeah, slowest yeah. person, whereas you do get some and then they get demotivated and then they drop out. So for me, you you can let, basically pace that program dependent on that young person. Does that So if that yeah. person it wants to be doing, I don't know, I mean, most of my apprentices are on the floor within within eight weeks doing yeah. work within eight weeks do you know what I mean and, and that's good for, and that's good for them isn't it for their motivation and for their confidence there's yeah. you know there's there's a huge amount to be said for actually getting some hands-on experience because they feel invested don't they not just invested they improve their common communication thing yeah. they, so they, they and it brings them up they enjoy their jobs and yeah. ultimately the reason people drop out of college or they drop out of um, apprenticeships which was what used to happen is because they're not enjoying what they're doing because a they're not getting paid enough okay b they don't like actually doing what they're doing and the, and the reason some owners don't pay them enough is because they're not bringing a big enough revenue in for them to put the wages up so it's, oh, just, no, it's a bit of a vicious circle isn't it apparently so, so and i was saying it's funny actually i was saying this on the, the podcast i did last week about work experience and how but you know the 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 young people, whoever it is, you know, whether it doesn't matter whether they're 18 or whether they're 35, really, but anyone coming into your, um, into a salon that is looking for that kind of trainee role in whatever capacity it is, you know, some of those roles and understanding about the communication and understanding about all of the things that make a salon tick, you know, you, if you can get that information into them in the first eight weeks is that before they prepare to go on the floor, then that's, you know, so important. And I was saying, there was a thing about, you know, everyone's always going about, oh yeah, work experience, you know, make them make the tea, make them do the cleaning. But without those fundamental things happening within a business, you won't have a business. And so it's an it actually, it's although engine. it's probably one of the most boring jobs in the world and everyone sees it as, you know, you are the, you are creating the face of that business and yeah, totally. that the trust a salon owner is putting on you to make that tea, welcome those clients, make sure those wax pots are clean or the hair swept off the floor, whatever it is. That's like it's, it's that's the first impressions of the salon is so I, much of what's given I, I, I think this is where the traineeship program has come in. I mean, we we deliver the traineeship. We can only deliver it in Kent, but that program is all over the UK, so you can tap into it. Most people do like the traineeships programs for say eight weeks does that make so what yeah. they do is they go into the uh, into a training provider who teach them employability skills part of our traineeship program we do we actually teach them blow drying and um uh blow drying and um washing hair but we also in our beauty one we teach them fundamental beauty like gel gel color brows we teach them so that gives them a bit of a taste of all yeah. of that stuff but also then they go into a, into a salon like 12 hours a week, okay, so that they get to see what it's like to work in a salon. And the good salon owners that use this traineeship program properly basically teach them as if they're an apprentice. Does that make sense? So yeah, they yeah. teach them shampooing if they're shampooing. They'll get them sitting next to them doing gel colors. But you'll know within that very small window Absolutely. if that person is passionate enough. And a lot of my salon owners, especially in the Kent area, they will take on apprentice traineeships because of what they've been like on that traineeship yeah. program. But also, you know, for the truck, but for the person that's going through that program, what an amazing opportunity yeah. to be able to try before they buy as well, because, you know, it totally. does go both ways, doesn't it? And we, we all know in industry, you know, there's so many, especially like year tens that come in to do work experience, you know, they all think they want to come in um, and be a beauty therapist or be a hairdresser or whatever, whatever niche they go into. And that reality check of they can't be insta famous overnight, yeah. Um, and they're not just you know sitting painting someone's nails and beautifying them and you know fluffing their hair or doing whatever it is they think that our industry does. Um, you know that reality check it does. You know, and I was saying, I speak, it kind of sorts the wheat from the chaff, and yeah, it gets totally. people that, sh that think they want to be in it and then realise they don't. And if you can, if they can remove this from their career choices early, 
then they're not wasting their time. It saves the taxpayer so much money. Yeah. And, so think, and, and, oh. and we have that. I mean, we probably, I would say out of the, the kids that come to us that we actually progress into the hair and beauty sector is probably about 20, 20 30%. Yeah. Most of them will go back to college to do another career. There's not yeah. many of them that will stick that and go all the way. And, the re yeah. and that's a really good way because it's been such a filter program for us. It also, you know, like we were saying earlier about um, whether they can, because we know to, to be a beauty therapist, to be a nail technician, to be a hair professional, they need also to have other skills. They need to be able to listen to people. They need to be able to um, relate to people. Does that make sense? They need, yeah. so, so, and also there needs to be, especially if you're going to do a level three advanced beauty now, because um, we, there's a, an advanced level free beauty and there's the well-being and holistic group mm -hmm. those qualifications you need to have um, enough savvy to be able to sit anatomy and physiology because they're going to go on to the other things like microblading aesthetic yeah, all absolutely. of the more level foot microneedling all of the what I call the much more more money ponds yeah. this yeah. is it and like you know like 10 years ago most of that stuff wasn't available, was it? I mean, well, probably not even five years ago, most of that was available. It was only just starting to come in. And now, you know, there's so many level four routes. And it, yeah. and, and also we've now got level four, level four, five, and I think six being um, written, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And well, it is, you know, we are becoming a degree level industry, and, which and is that, amazing. But that's the key, isn't it? That is the key now is that because we're having all of those levels and they're all going to be delivered as apprenticeships as well, which is quite good. Yeah. Um, which is fantastic because ultimately for us as a sector that's going to raise the bar of the people that come into our industry and see it as a high paying industry to get into yeah. which is what when you sit down with a young person what you've got to do is before you actually talk to them about apprenticeship you've got to say where do you want to be in I don't know in seven or eight months and as a salon owner we've got to stop being frightened that they're going to leave us guess what they're going to leave us, okay? Because it's natural, isn't it? Totally. It's a progression of what they are. However, if you use the apprenticeship programme properly, you've always got your next superstar coming through. Yeah. And you can put things in place. So, like, for instance, what we do is um, when, our sal when whoever trains that person up, if they're working in that salon, okay, well, what I used to do, we pay them a percentage of what they've helped train that person in. So yeah. if you have a really good person, sometimes it stops them leaving to go down the salon or down the road because they'll, yeah. they'll lose that income. So there's so many ways around it. Stop putting yeah. the ceiling on it. Stop sort of like, make sure you raise your prices dependent on that person and their ability. Yeah. Make sure you share that with with your your staff. It's, it's like rewarding that mentorship, isn't it? You know, because if you've got a, if you've got a salon um, employee who's been there for like seven or eight years, the wealth of experience they've already got, and if they can pass that down the line, yeah, you know, yet yeah, reward them for it. Totally, yeah. and, and we attract people to our salon because of that reason. So, like, we yeah. have real specialist people in our salon now. Do you know what I mean? Who who are specialised in certain things, and the reason that they are specialised in certain things is because they've come through our programs. Does that make sense? Got their niche, gone off and done that niche, yeah. built their own business within them for themselves, but they're in our salon. Yeah, Does that makes sense. So. Yeah. So, so it just gives you kudos to what, you know, what can be achieved. I just wish yeah. that, I wish salon owners would see their worth. I think, you know, we, the reason that we didn't through COVID get so recognised by the government and, you know, some of the, the, the comments that were made about our industry is because we don't do ourselves any favours. I don't no. think we, as an industry, um, we under price ourselves and, and, I think, we, and I think we're mis we're massively misunderstood and I think you know the whole thing I mean like we well, could sit I could sit going on for ages about the way we were mistreated during COVID but one of the things and you know was the whole thing around like beauty what was, that, what was it they called us beauty parlors like, yeah 
you know, and yet, that, as that. <laughs> I know this mis this misunderstanding of, yeah. of who we are as professionals and the fact that we, you know, just the fact we're a professional industry, um, you know. But I think you know it is changing, and you know, love Rishi Sunak, and he just went to the British Beauty Council's event and actually spoke about what an amazing industry we are, yeah. which is great. But you know, when you and finally, I think that you know, base have realised that we're we're okay. The chancellor's realised that we're okay. Yeah. Um, and it, and I do think like you know, but the media and the way that we're um, yeah, we're shown in the media yeah. and on TV programs, just most of us shudder every time we see anything because but it I doesn't think, represent us, does it? But that's what I think. I think we if we can get so like well, now we've built up quite a big network of salon owners that and now this is what they're doing. They are actually doing their level four assessors award, their coaching award as part and that's an, apprentice, that's an apprenticeship by the way okay so they, I know I know when we were talking the other week it's like, oh my god what well, how yeah. can I get myself on an apprenticeship yeah, I know you have to, you have to <laughs> can be, I get funding for me yeah you have to be employed by your salon so you have to be a limited company and you have to be on payroll but then yeah. if you're going to build a business then that's the right way to yeah, go does exactly. that make sense and I think yeah. As we grow as a business, that's the next step, isn't it, to do that? And once you've done that, you can then basically pay yourself a wage, which you should be anyway, paying yourself a wage, because yeah. if you were taken out of that business, you'd have to replace yourself with somebody. And yeah. isn't that the ultimate goal for most salon owners? Yeah, Is absolutely. Be able to walk away. Otherwise, you just okay. replaced it with a job, haven't you? Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I, but salon owners say to me all the time, oh, I... I I love my job yeah you do but you need to have that you need to be able to have that flexibility that if you want to go on holiday for two weeks you haven't got to look at well you know what's going to happen and, uh, you know when I'm away I'm going to lose this amount of money because then you've got a job that's not a, yeah. that's not being self-employed yeah. that's a job so I think as a business I think that's why I love the apprenticeship scheme and the only reason I used it was because I had a self-employed person that walked away with all my clientele within six months of me opening my salon I mean I was I came from um, a, a, a business background. I had, I, when I was younger, I had tried, when, I, I was actually worked in a salon when I was younger. And when I was put off by my grandparents, who I went to live with, who said, there's no money in hair and beauty. Mm. And what I regretted, I went from lots of different careers and I ended up Me too. working. Yeah. My mum was like, no, learn to type. You'll always yeah. have a job. Yeah, and the irony is now, if anything, that if I'd have stayed in that role, I probably would find it more challenging to get any work. Yeah, totally, absolutely. So, I mean, for me now, the cosmetic, like, you know, that I left my job at 38 and then, uh, and built a salon up basically yeah. from that. And then from that, we've, I, like I said, I've had numerous salons and from that yeah. now, I believe that anyone can do it if they really know how to do it. And why would you not, okay, talk to somebody that's already done it, okay, <laughs> rather than trying to make, they've already made your mistakes so they yeah. know how to make that work yeah so for me it's more like now that was my message and I think what happened was in um when we launched um what we were going to do and like I said teach the salon owner to actually do the training themselves or have someone within their salon doing the training for them yeah. which is another way that's a great way of keeping somebody you know your superstars with you because yeah. they're giving them a really good qualification um but also as well then you've got you, you're giving them another way to make some money because ultimately they could get a percentage of the young person they train and they stay with you because yeah that they're committed to be with you. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, for me, it's like, anyway, going back to the question about uh, ages. <laughs> <laughs> I've one thing I want to check, because I, I wasn't sure about how the traineeship things work. So how, so if you're on a traineeship, do you get paid? No. And you don't get, so that it doesn't, so it's like a, 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 an extended work experience. Yeah, yeah, it's an extended work experience. Some salons will, I, I mean, we always encourage our salons to give them something. So sometimes they have their hair done or their yeah. nails done or they, uh, but you, you very, very quickly, sometimes they'll pay for them, you know, like their travel to work or their yeah. lunches. And if, don't forget, a traineeship program is from 16 to 24. So they're very, very often very young um, that, that come on that program. It's, we, it, I think it's, I think that's, because I haven't really heard of those before. And I think that's a really fantastic way to 
for you, because for you to try out our industry, for anyone to try our industry out. And if and I think if you can get into a program like that, if you're not sure if it's for you, because it might be you get two weeks into it and just go, do you know, that's it. I'm really not, that's not me. Well, give, give you an example of what we do is because when we put, we advertise for all of our apprentices um, for our salons. So what we do is we pre-screen them, interview them before we actually put them to the salon owner. So we try and sort of like get that, it out um, and that's that's we've done this last year we've started implementing that because that was one of the missing gaps in our because yeah. that's what we used to do um, and being fair you know we we're quite good at um interviewing now do yeah. you know what I mean so so I so it's very easy for me to sort of get a real gist and the people that um we filter so like we'll say that that's an apprentice that's a traineeship because you yeah. know from the questions that they answer whether they're actually going to hit it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think somebody, you know, because you can have a level two from college who's done a level two at college and they've never been on the salon floor. Does that make sense? So yeah. they really oh, yeah. don't it's... know what it's like to work in a salon. And so for them to have the eight weeks in a salon to see what it's really like working yeah. can work really well. Yeah, because I don't, and I think especially, you know, for the, the poor students that have gone through the COVID um, times, you know, they've had barely any hands on time at all anyway. No, and, no. you know, and so we know that there's a there's a whole cohort of students that have come out from last year's cohort, plus the ones that have gone through. Well, the cohort that finished last June missed yeah. out because most of their practical yeah. assessments would have been um, challenged. And then everybody that started in September through to June just gone you know, has lost huge amounts of practical skill really? um, training. And so if they can get into a salon, because a lot of colleges, like you were saying, because of the funding, they'll be ticked off, they'll be passed. Um, and so they will, have, they'll be coming into industry with harm, you know, with, with not enough practical experience. And, funny, and to me, it's commercial funny. salon yeah. in a FE is not workplace. And I know, you know, it's very hard to properly, sti um, to properly simulate that, but it really isn't. You know, so, I mean, I know when so, I was doing mine, it's not. This is mine. an example of you said to me, why is it better for um, someone to come in through the apprenticeship route? You've just outlined exactly why it is. Because yeah. if I, I went back and interviewed a lot of our old apprentices who had come through the route of level two, level three, and then now they're in salons. And they all said their peers or their friends that went to college were coming out of college and were two years behind them. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So salary no wise, commercial experience. Money, totally. And an example of what I had yesterday just shows you with exactly what the, the situation you just des described. Two hair students come came out with a hair qualification. So that disqualifies them from doing the hair professional because the diploma is, is part of the unit, part of the qualification yeah. in the apprenticeship scheme. So what she's done, and this is what we've built a program around this, we, we bought we built a customer service apprenticeship. Yeah, which is all linked around the salon. So it teaches them retailing, it teaches them um, salon etiquette, it teaches them behaviours, all of the stuff that you need to know. If you're because you're not just doing the treatments, you're actually going to be in there actually building a clientele. So we're teaching them that. And she's going to have to put those two people on that because they can't cut hair, even though they've got the diploma. Do you yeah. see what I mean? And otherwise, those two girls would find it very difficult. All they've done is on dolly heads. Now, that's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How can Because you... dolly heads don't do what I do when I have my hair cut. Totally. <laughs> and you yeah, don't straighten your head. Straighten your head. And how can you cons consult with somebody? Do you know? And that's the other thing oh. with the standards. Um, going back to the standards, you have to sit an endpoint assessment now with an outside outside awarding body. So we cannot sign people off. They're the ones that will sign them off. So they can't basically get slip through the net now because they won't they won't qualify because they have to sit. That's how it should be, isn't it? Totally, they sit a six yeah. hour. Um, a visit from the awarding bodies and in that they have to have a portfolio of evidence they have to have a professional discussion and they have to be doing models and there, there'll be specific models they have to see and they and, and the great thing about it now is that they can get a pass 
um, a fail or a distinction. Okay. So basically, you as a salon owner, if you have someone come to you with an apprenticeship that's done distinction, you know that that person can do the job. Do, yeah, do you know what I mean? And will be coming absolutely. to you with a clientele unless they've moved out of the, the area, basically. But yeah. if they're in your area, they're going to have a clientele because that clientele, we all know, will follow. A lot of them will follow yeah. them to the next salon. With Instagram and Facebook, you can't stop that now because that's yeah, exactly so what crazy. happens. So it's it's part and part so yeah wonderful i know so that so that kind of cover who we cover we've covered like so much Stop there uh, the, <laughs> oh that was it about the uh, percentage with an uh, you know you said can anyone do an apprenticeship yeah. so from 16 to 18 it's fully funded so the government pay everything but from 19 plus they'll only pay 95 percent. but the percentage just to give you some indication is three so a hair professional is worth seven thousand pounds yes so actually it's 350 pounds the salon owner has to find now that if that person drops out at any point that's pro rated over the whole time of the apprenticeship so actually as long as you can get them on the floor within eight weeks which is what we teach you to do and that's what you should be doing get them on the floor as quickly as possible by giving them what i call the low ticket items does that make sense yep, gel color you yeah. know like the ones brows all of those then they can be earning you money very quickly now the government have also just announced which is really great there is an incentive at the moment so if it's 16 to 18 there's always an incentive an incentive for the um employer which is a thousand pound they get 500 pounds after three months and 500 pounds after the 12 month period yeah but they've also now brought in another grant which they've had running from the beginning of august last year which is three thousand pound now that is any age any new employee that's taken on from from a certain period so they're taken on from i don't know the, the exact dates at the moment because they've just extended it it was yeah. meant to finish on the 30th of september and it's now being extended till january so I haven't got all the details on that, but we will have. Does that make yeah. sense? So, so they also give you a grant towards the wages and the and the and the additional costs they see you have to do. Yeah. I'm hoping. Oh, that's a traineeship, by the way, as well. So on the traineeship, there is another, another thousand pound grant. So you, as wow. a salon owner, can get that towards the training. So they're rewarding you for doing the training. I think the first ten traineeships you ever have okay uh, they give you a thousand pounds because i suppose at the end of the day what they're looking at is if that works for you you'll use that traineeship program all the time after yeah. that uh, even without the grants to be honest i don't know why salons don't use it do you know what i'm saying well do you know i mean but i mean i've been in my salon for years and i and i mean i've only just sold mine a couple of months ago and i'd never heard of the trainees uh, thing I, well, the I think i might you know in in a distant thing but i mean it was not something that had that I'd seen in our media, particularly, you know, it might, it might be I sort of flick the page and thought I'll read it later, but I've never actually known the detail of it. And I wow. think that is an amazing way to start pulling people in. Just, and it just for both parties, because I think as well, we have to remember with all of these things is that it's, you know, the apprentice is getting something out of it, the salon owner is getting something out of it. And, and and it is it's a two way street, and it isn't yeah. all about you know because I think so I think some of the time, you know, salon owners see apprentices as just a problem because yeah. it's, you know, because they they take a lot of work and a lot of investment of your time and your team's time and everything, but you know, but if you get it right, then you know, and like I know you've got lots and lots of examples of where it does work well that you know that you end up with employees that are with you and grow and yeah they might go off and leave you know we're in a female dominated industry so a lot of the time they are going to go off and have kids and get married and do all that stuff and but then they're still going to come back and you know if you get it right then maybe they come back to you but, 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 but even with me even the salon the, I always look at it when I have anybody in my salon that they're going to be 16 and then by the age of 24 the chances are they're going to go off and have children do you know what I'm saying or also they be, might become a ceiling on what they can earn and you know with self-employment out there at the moment it, it's quite attractive to go off yeah. so as long as you have have built your program that you give them every chance of staying with you so like I've got salon owners at the moment who have got people in their salons that they're now training up as team leaders okay so like our we've got an apprenticeship built around the hair program as a team leader does that make sense yeah yeah, so, yeah. So, so for us there is all, all of that there that they learn how to run a team well 
that then gives as long as someone owners learn to let go which i think we're very mm-hmm. guilty of yeah okay. self control freak here yeah but then that's it's taught hard. in the team leading that's actually taught in the team leading that's taught that you know that um you know you you need to let go i think salon owners need to understand if they want to have that you know i retired from the chair quite quickly probably three 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 four years i i walked away from my salon and had people running at my salon and working in it but that was all done through the apprenticeship programs because i could build them as and when i needed them and and i could build their 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 um i could build their wage based on what revenue they were bringing me in and also making sure that i charged the prices but like we said earlier on the graduate price you know yeah. doing all of those things as they grew through the system and it also gave the apprentice the 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 you know like the the goal was this is what you've got to achieve in the next three months consistently and it's consistently not not just good month and a bad month so they have to do it over a three month period and I have lots of little things that I tick there like retail they have to redo rebooking they have to market there's there's like a whole list of stuff we put in there and then they do that a, you know if that person's committed to what they want to do and you can trial them on the traineeship first even on the apprenticeship in the first four weeks if you can't see them reaching the little goals you've already set them don't keep them do you yeah. know what i mean you this don't have to keep apprentices and i hear someone only say to me all the time yeah but it's really difficult to get hold of an rid of apprentice if they're no good no it isn't you oh, no, that's one of the things on my list of um, questions yeah. i was going to ask you because i know i've removed apprentices from my business when it hasn't worked out yeah. um and and it is you know and it wasn't it's, it's employment law yeah and the same as they can leave you they're not t- you know i mean it used to be years ago didn't you, you were a retired apprentice back like yeah. you know a few decades ago and you couldn't leave but nowadays you know the, the apprentices are as free to come and go as we are to help them come and, and, them go. Go. You and know, i think it's, um, that again is just people um I think that's just other people have had bad experience. They, I mean, I go a lot in the Facebook groups and, and I lit, read all the different things in there. And, I, and when people talk about apprentices and there's a negative thing about apprenticeships, it's normally because that person has had a really bad experience or they're not very good at interviewing. OK, so they mm-hmm. don't probably find out all the ins and outs before they go or they're not very good at raising their prices or investing time in that person. Yeah. It's not because it's, it's, I've I just the last apprentice I had I was using um, obviously not your service not your trainee providership um, <laughs> but I was using an alternative trainee <gasps> providership um, <laughs> and it was a really good system but yeah. unfortunately but the uh, it was it just was really challenging and she and the, you know the apprentice had some issues going on personally and it and it didn't work out you know after a few weeks she yeah. wasn't able to come to work for a lot of different reasons and and it was and it was really really hard and that particular and I was really excited to take that apprentice on because it was the first one I was going to actually do the training yeah. and it was going to be me that was imparting my skill and I mean I'm an educator anyway so for me that was quite an easy thing to do yeah you know but trying to pull you you know having that time to take yourself away from the chair or from your desk or whatever and I kind of had it all set and then it, and it didn't work out and I was quite I was quite gutty because I I was looking forward to that one and I think, it's I, think, I, I think this is where where um, where a lot of salon owners get it wrong as being that they think it's going to take a lot of their time up. So, I mean, I I can probably give you a list, a massive list of of salon owners that are using this system, um, and they will say to you basically that if you do it the right way, like for instance, you you do a set of nails, you'll probably sit and do a set of nails every single day, basically so what is there to stop that apprentice sitting next to you watching what you're doing mm. you telling them what you're doing and how yeah. you're doing it and then break it down into little little chunks so like right so now you've learned now what I want you to learn today is how to prep nails so the next person that comes in I want you to prep do the prep on them yeah. so they just do the prep then the next thing is blend the tip if that's what you do do you know yeah. what I mean and and then or paint let's get you to paint this set of nails be really honest sometimes you have to over uh, go over it but it's not it doesn't take you that long for them to get it does that mean no. it really doesn't if they're the right person and you've done this properly same with hair but like i always we teach our salon owners the first thing that they let those those people learn is the retail they learn all the products on the on, on you know what on the shampoo thing to actually make sure that they know them they talk about those products when they're washing hair 
okay so they're, they're washing hair so first straight away they're making you money because they're washing hair and they're upselling conditioning treatments okay yeah. so they're learning to give them those conditioning treatments we do dual consultations so when it, when it, when uh, somebody comes in we take that young person we have them with them and say oh what do you think about this so what would you do if that was you so they're learning how to communicate they're learning how to make, you even have to teach them sometimes how to make a proper cup of coffee yes, but absolutely. it isn't that different and how to wash up we've had to teach some some young people how to wash up because yeah, totally. they had to do it at home no, i mean but, what but, is that and i'm really sorry like to any parents out there who haven't um shown their children how to wash up yet please do it's yeah. a life skill um <laughs> <laughs> and it is really and it's really important when they've got a boss yeah. that's saying can you wash up my uh, son, you know, and obviously not, you know, you're I've not going to have to do that in every job that you this is a really for. funny story we had, is, a owner, oh. we had a salon owner who said to me she said uh, i said what is the funniest thing this is this is another thing with the employer network meetings this is really good because we get people that say stuff and i said to her right i want you all to come up with something that you think i found really funny as a salon owner with an apprentice and she went i had this um apprentice she said i asked her to make a cup of coffee and she said i looked down at the woman's coffee and it was milk she didn't put the coffee in yeah. <laughs> so that's what i'm trying to say sometimes that is what they need. Do you know what it's just reminds me of <laughs> my daughter who killed me <laughs> when we when I first opened my salon she was 15 and um and she did used to make me tea at home and I don't I don't know what came over her this day she will kill me for doing this um but I could and I even remember the client she was a female um painter and decorator which was quite yeah. unusual she was very specialist in what she did lovely lovely lady and my daughter you know very um, professionally got up to me you know would, would you like a coffee or a tea and all of this anyway um so she went off and made this tea and coffee and I think she was she'd forgotten how much time had passed <laughs> since she made the previous tea and coffee yeah. and so she went down the back and she just made this coffee um with the water that was in the kettle and my client she was sitting drinking she left it for a minute to cool down <laughs> and she did and then she tasted it she nearly spat it out and my daughter hadn't reboiled the kettle <laughs> And so she had this freezing cold yeah, coffee know, we, and it was so my client was like oh don't say anything don't say anything it was, it was so funny but, but it was but it's just and she's quite intelligent she's got yeah, degrees right. and everything now I, I think as it, a salon owner as long as you have all your systems in place yeah do you know what I mean as in what you've got to remember is that you have all those things in your head when that new person comes in they haven't got a clue but I have to say I have had people that I've employed who weren't apprentices is who uh, and it's cost me a lot more money like i'll give you an example i mean say for instance you're paying 10 pounds an hour if you have 10 pounds an hour okay that's three say say over the week at 30 hours what's that 300 pound a week is that yeah. 300? yeah so that's 300 pounds if you times that by 12 or or the main, most time you have someone in your salon eight weeks and you think they're not they're not all right if you work that out how much that has cost you that is nothing compared to when you have an apprentice first come in and older apprentices will take a lesser wage to start with yeah. okay because they want to get the, to go to college and do these courses fully funded, they can't afford it. Some of them will have little part-time jobs on the side. Does that make sense to measure that up? They'll do it in the salon. They'll they'll do they'll build their clients up much quicker, which is another good thing because they'll want to get on the floor to earn more money quicker. So they're much more goal orientated. So you've got that's a good thing. But the, even the youngsters will if they if you set them the initiatives to earn more money. But yeah. you've got to do that. And I think once you, so like even when you're advertising for your apprentices, make sure you put in there plus commission or plus bonus, because yes. if they see the £4.30 an hour price, which is what um, the, the apprenticeship starter wage is, would you go and work for £4.30 an hour? Probably not. But if you put £4.30 plus bonus and you can earn this amount of money, does that yeah. make sense long term? Yeah they're more likely to go yes, for that job we just we i think really as an industry i think we kind of need to rethink how we how we utilize apprentices and how we attract them um, yeah. and you know we are we're in a you know we were talking about this earlier weren't we about the big skills shortage we've got in this industry and you know recognizing that we we've got a we have got a hole you know um, yeah. and it is a constant theme across salon owner um, groups and stuff at the moment where there is this massive 
Um, I, you know, please, can someone suggest where I can advertise for staff? Where can I get this type of stuff? Where can I get that type of stuff? Because no one, you know, you, I think as well, you, when we were talking about just now about the interviewing thing, I think at the moment, I know, you know, sometimes I found it quite challenging over the years and I was a good son. I was an award winning salon and all the rest of it, but trying to attract people just to come to interview that aren't just ticking boxes for their universal credit um, and then just don't turn up. Well, that's if you've got a good training provider like me. Yeah, yeah that's it. But this is the thing, isn't it? It's just, yeah, it's they do the pre-screening yeah. for you. They, they basically, like for us, what we've realised more than anything to help our salon owners out over the last 12 months is that we have got a very thorough pre -screen. If they don't fill the pre-screening form in, that says loads. They're, yeah, not, massively. they're not going to. If they if they do the pre-screening and then they do like a face-to-face -face interview like this, then with with the training provider, they're interested. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They are interested. So you're much. You might not. You might not get ten people apply for that position, but you may get one superstar. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And how busy are we when we're in our salons? To I've sat there interviewing people and 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 had all these CVs in, booked out a whole day, and one has turned up. Yeah. And that isn't just in my salon. That is in my training academy, yeah. and that doesn't okay, necessarily. It's, it's across the board. They don't have to. I mean, we have office staff, so it can be, it isn't just our sector. That's across the yeah. board. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, and so. I do think there is a thing. I mean, I'm not quite sure, you know, I'm not sure how the job seekers and stuff works now mm -hmm. um, and universal because it's everything. If it's all tied in together, isn't yeah. it? It's not something I really get involved in. But I mean, I know when we've had, when I've been recruiting for part time employees previously, um, if good for probably about four or five years, maybe more, maybe longer ago, um, you know, they, if they were on job seekers back then, they only had to prove they had an interview. And yeah, so they right. book all these interviews doing all different I think that still applies. And, um, you know, and so it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how we get around it, but there's, there is a big problem, isn't there? And I think a lot of people end up just, and I know I've probably done it over the years, is that you take from such a small pool of candidates mm. that in the end you kind of pick the best of, of what's the, there. Of, of the worst. Yeah. The best of the worst. The and best of those why, that turned up. Yeah, because and that's, that's what why, it comes why down why to, I think the apprenticeship, necessarily the most skilled. No, and that's why I think the apprenticeship scheme is better because yeah. you are getting, some, and, and they tend to be more loyal. I mean, and the reason I think they are more loyal is because, I mean, I, I, my latest my, my I just had an apprentice which was with me from 16 and she's just left she's 28 actually I think she's going to appear in Scratch Magazine she's a fantastic nail technician she's so clever um but she was um, a tutor for us okay and got to a stage even as a tutor that she wants now to have her own business so she's gone off and she's now working in a quite a high um, salon that is all nails and she's loving it and some of the work she's producing is fantastic I, I look at her work on Instagram it's so high does that make sense but yeah. she was with me from the age of 16 so although that's she's it, lovely, at 28 that's a long time yeah, massively. You know what I mean? and you've made your you know whatever effort you've put into that person at the beginning you've had that tenfold do you know what I mean in all that time and maybe and you know and maybe you know as an industry we need to look at as apprentices um off what I was gonna say now um that yeah but because when they're like when I know when I've had girls come out of college that it's their first role or even their second role sometimes you know because always you've got to train them into the way your salon yeah. works but um but that whole thing of you know I've, I've I've taken girls from college, paid them above minimum wage, and you're still effectively putting them and doing the training you would if they were an apprentice, and so and without any funding. But so you why have not take a service apprentice. apprenticeship now? So you can use that. You see. Yeah. So you get those, you put them on the customer service apprenticeship for yeah. 12 months. They learn all the skills that they need to learn upskill. And then you can then put them on a higher level. I mean, yeah. and there's so many apprenticeships now out there that, that are all geared towards our industry and they're growing all the time. Do you know what I mean? No, I think it's more. fantastic. I really, and I really, really hope that, you know, I mean, I think at the moment coming out of COVID and the pandemics, I think there's a lot of salons that are just desperate to have some staff and people that can yeah. hit the floor. Um, and work immediately which I kind of understand because obviously there's been this huge move where a lot of employed staff over the pandemic decided they liked being at home 
and they've been, you know, they've all set up little home salons and stuff. And whether or not that's going to shift as they realise the um, pressures of the first tax return, and whether they will decide that employment is is for them after all. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of shifts, I think, in our industry over the next couple of years. I think there is going to be an element of that because not everybody, even as and from a self-employed position, will enjoy that because no, we know no. as well as we do. But then maybe that's what we need to look at a whole new model. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It is, and I think you know. I think yeah, the pandemic has shifted things for huge numbers of industries and sectors, and I know for us. Yeah, th things have changed a lot, haven't they? And I really, really hope that people utilise the opportunities that apprenticeships just, and tra just, these traineeships can give them. Just, just a bit of a thought here. Mm. Like you, you said earlier on about like they want to have somebody hit the the road running, the running. To be really honest, you can fit more clients in with an apprentice. So you've got an assistant than you can. So actually, your column becomes fuller. Mm. but more but earning more money out of it yeah. because you let them do like what I call the low ticket stuff or yeah. the prepping do you know what I mean yeah. all the things that you have got to do so within a, within a very short time eight weeks maximum if you're any good at what you do you can get that person on the floor earning you money there's no question of a doubt and I think as well is just that recognition that you know for some of the jobs like that, those low ticket jobs that they'll be doing and also the more um maintenance side of, of our profession oh you know and it is and you know the, the stuff that they need to look all of us do you know I used to do the washing I used to do the washing up I used to clean my salon I'd be there mopping floors and do whatever yeah. I needed to do at whatever point it was required um, and, you know, and they are some of the most important jobs. And I think understanding that apprentices, you know, they will have an element of that in their job, but that then frees up the um, staff that can that can charge high ticket prices, because if they're setting up rooms and they're um, sweeping or making the teas, they aren't, you know, so it, that using but the example of that has got to be, and this is what I'm saying from the salon owners, is that the set that the, they have to instill into that young person and the worth that they're giving them like they have to reward them as in do you yeah. know what what you did today with the washing up was fat it, you've helped yeah. us and let's let's give you a you know it, most people need to feel appreciated that's one of the other things that we yeah. don't do and I think as salon owners we need to appreciate the salon owners or if they or if that young person gets up to do, maybe they don't do it correctly or maybe they don't do it as well as what you do it but if they've got up to let that person come through their door does that make sense and speak yeah. to that person whether it's not how you want it yet guess what if you had if they hadn't have done that then you wouldn't have had the time to do that you're trying to concentrate on the client in front of you yeah. you are not giving that client what you need to give them because you're looking yeah. at this person do you know what yeah. I mean Absolutely, and it is, and that whole, the, all of that, all of those little parts of our role that the apprentices can pick up are so important in how they grow as professionals. And I think yeah. there's a, we overlook that a lot. And I think apprentices probably overlook how important and trainees or work experience, whoever they are, that are those low level um, roles as they come through and start growing. That all of those little jobs that everyone thinks are so, yeah, yeah. why am I being made to do this? Yeah. Um, there's a re there is a reason behind it and it's and it's about your personal growth your career growth and understanding that how to be a professional because yeah. if you don't go through those processes you're never going to understand why when that client walks through the door you literally not not necessarily fall at their feet fawning at them but you've got to be polite respectful courteous and yeah. make sure that they're getting the best experience for someone coming totally. into that business. totally and, and I think if you do put that into your um, I mean, as a training provider, uh, we teach the salon owner and also the young person how to build their clientele using Instagram. Um, but the um, salon owner owns, they don't, you don't have to, it, it's yeah. an extra that we offer. But the reason we do that is so that they can attract clients through the door at their level. Because yeah. they're, they're, basically, you want your apprentice to bring in new clients that you mm. don't normally, and they often yeah. do because they'll bring a younger clientele into your salon for a start. Does that make sense? Which yeah. will grow with the apprentice. But they also know what that young per that those younger people are looking for. So they're more likely to attract them. Yeah. So we teach them how to do that using we use some an outside person that comes in and does that for us. And and it's all done through the internet, it's all done through Zoom. So it doesn't matter where you are, but that thing itself. 
they then learn how to do social media for you, which yeah. as a salon owner is a workup when we're trying to oh do Oh my goodness, else. yeah. I find it if I, I mean, I did, I mean, I used to pay someone to do my um, yeah. social media at different points. Um, who was a, who that's what they did. And that was their specialism. And oh my goodness me, it was so nice when I didn't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. it's just it is. It's such it's such a as, as a business owner, it's just such a time drainer. Yeah, definitely. But, and that's what I'm saying. That they are the things that apprentices can do. And you know, as an employee, like, like I said, I've employed people at full rate and had to do exactly the same thing as what I have to do with my apprentices because they have come even from another salon, haven't got a yeah. you know, they don't work around my brand. And that's another thing, you know, you want to build. You know, self-employed is great, but they're not your brand and they've got their own interest in their own business. Does that make sense? And yeah, they're absolutely. building their own yeah. business. They're not going to help you build your business. So by having a younger, it doesn't always have to be young people. It can be older, but having a younger following or younger person coming through, even if they have done level two and level three at college and put them on the customer service apprenticeship to get them in your salon, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's an interesting opportunity it's, because I think, you know, what, when you've got those other apprenticeships available to you, it, it's it, hopefully, you know, hopefully that's going to, you know, because for me, if I still have my salon at this point, you know, I would possibly be, because if you've got a level three candidate coming in who you can put on a customer services apprenticeship to top up their knowledge yeah but you've still you've got all of those practical skills that you can immediately use yes. then there is no need to pay them four pound 30 an hour no totally and, and that- i think salon owners you know obviously it is a cheap way of doing it if it, you know you're the salon owner that wants to work that way but you know you've got to learn that rewarding our staff is the way to improve our business yeah totally and it's prices as well making yeah. sure that you set the prices correctly for that yeah. and, and having the knowledge to do that and and that's what you need to have is somebody that yeah. can help that's you with another it. whole do you yeah, we've been, we've, been over, we've been on this over an hour sarah i know i know so, i know i, know. I, know. I, I might know. split into two <laughs> <laughs> but it's um but it's, the thing is though but i think all of us that kind of get involved in some of this stuff in the industry you know we can sit talking passionately about it for so long and um and it, yeah, it's it's hard to stop because there's always another little thing, isn't there? That I've got that my is, COVID jab, so I know I've got. Yeah, one. you've got to go. <laughs> you need to get organised. But um, anyway, we probably ought to leave it there. I mean, there's so many other things that we could talk about. Yeah. But um, but what I'll do is we'll, we're going to put um, Sarah's links into the show notes, so you'll be able to contact her if you're an employer. Contact her if you're an apprentice that wants to get involved. Um, and you are national, aren't you? I mean, it's, yeah. it's creeping. Yeah. I know you're Kent based, but it is creeping yeah. out there, isn't it? And we've got people in Devon. We've got Chesterfield all over the place now yeah. because because I think because this is what we're trying to do. We're looking for salon owners who want to invest in the next generation, yeah. who actually want to build up, you know, a, a build up sort of like their next superstars, if you know what I'm yeah. saying. But Absolutely, and I, it's it's so so important. And reduce and their costs. Reduce their costs. Because yeah. they can reduce their costs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Term wise. Oh so. no. Oh, there's just so much. But yeah, so do if you're if anyone that's interested in an apprenticeship, get in touch with Sarah and all of her details will be on the show notes. Um, and also on my website it should be on there too. So Sarah, we're just gonna finish with my shoot from the hip questions. So there's just a few of them. So literally ask your question, just say the first thing that comes into your head. So what makes you get out of bed in the morning? Our passion for our industry, I think, yeah. make it better. Wonderful. What has been the happiest moment of your career? Is having an apprentice contact me to say that she had been the L'Oreal ambassador. Wow, that's a good <laughs> one. What's the best piece of advice you've ever had? And did you listen at the time or learn the hard way? I learned the hard way. And the best bit of advice is to focus on one thing at a time, not try and put yourself too yeah, short. Right, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm still trying to hear that one. Um, <laughs> if you could change one thing in your career, what would it be? I'd have got into it sooner. Oh, what person, place or experience has inspired you the most professionally? Oh, person, oh, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Um, there's so many. Uh, God, that's really, that's killing me. I can't think of one. Let me just have a think. It's really inspired me. I, th- I think probably going to, um, I think it was probably myself, my own experience of basically 
really wanting to uh, is that now I can't really think what, what which one it would be what's really inspired me I think the passion that I've seen in the industry over COVID is having a couple of my salon owners that I've worked with in the last year who I've seen just how inspired they are to make the industry better so people like yourself um people like um a lady called Bene um, becky sanarski who's from the fantastic hairdresser um who else who would i say inspires me denise ferguson Ooh. and people like julie um jennifer louise from um yeah. breakfast of winners on clubhouse because they're all they've all got it does that make sense yeah. they inspire me because i realized that it isn't just me it's us as salon owners we want to change do you know what yeah. I mean um, so that that would say yeah wonderful what's the best treatment you've ever had um the best treatment has been a is it a um a massage oh. um, absolutely loved it um it's actually done by a guy called Ben Bartlett oh my god it's to die for it was absolutely fantastic and I have it regularly now once a week so there you go wow. there you go <laughs> call out for Ben yeah um, and lastly given the opportunity would you do it all again yeah yeah I don't think any of us would change it really I, don't know, I suppose there's going to be the odd person that might say it we'll see there's been difficult times but no wouldn't yeah. change it learn and move on yeah wonderful thank you very much wow that was a really really long podcast and I didn't know I didn't I couldn't I couldn't stop the interview because Sarah was just giving so much high value um information for everybody really it was a very um you know all-round interview and I'm probably um not even going to really cut that much out of it because I think it just it was a really lovely conversation and I like spending time with Sarah. She really, really knows her stuff and is doing wonders for the industry. And considering she hadn't even been online before pandemic, before the pandemic, um, she's doing an amazing job. And you can find her in Clubhouse most mornings in the um, Breakfast for Winners, I think it's called. Um, and she's, yeah, she does loads and loads of stuff on Clubhouse. She is on Facebook too. And uh, yeah, all of her details are in the show notes as we mentioned in the interview. And you can find her on our website. Again, that was all in the show. So just have a bit of a rewind if you missed it. And, um, and if not, go to the show notes. Don't forget to like and subscribe and um, make sure you listen to as many as you can. Do please go and join me on my Inspiring Salon Professionals um, group on Facebook. And you can also find me as Sue Davies on the Instagram account. Um, these interviews do also go on YouTube where you can find me and Sue Davies on there. So if you fancy seeing who's behind the podcast and you want to see the, um, the interviews as a video, then you can do so on YouTube. And, uh, and also, I'm just going to do a little quick shout out because um, my daughter, um, Ariana, does um, a lovely little line in candles and um and I keep talking I keep sort of saying I'm going to have some little adverts on the show and this week she's just getting ready to launch her Christmas candles so if anybody is interested in some Christmas retail or if you're looking to have some lovely gifts for your um, most high spending clients and you want to give them a little gift for Christmas to say thank you for all of their loyal support through the very challenging times that we've had over the last year um, Nostos Candles, N-O-S-T-O-S -O -S Candles, they're all hand created and hand crafted, hand poured, and um, there's an awful lot of effort goes into making these candles, they're beautiful, my house always smells um, of an amazing array of different aromas that she sells, but the Christmas candles are just about to release, so a little shout out for her, and, um, and get ordering. They're very good value. She does wholesale prices for all of us in industry. Um, and if you're not in industry and listening to this, then you can also go to her website and buy them. But if you are in a position to purchase retail stock for your, um, for your business, then just go over to Nostos Candles on Facebook or on Instagram and give her a little follow. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy them as much as we do. So see you next week and look forward to sharing some more information with you then. Bye for now.